Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, course on applied ergonomics. I am Professor Shantanu Bhattacharya and I will be co-instructing this course uh, along with Professor Ankur Gupta of IIT Bhuvaneshwar who has already given few lecture sessions uh, ahead of uh, these lectures. So, today my lecture is going to be based on uh, a study of work systems, how uh, in a very highly classified and an organized manner uh, we can call something a work system and then some issues which are related to the way that various components associated with those systems like human factors, uh, machines or let us say even uh, uh, information uh, or information flow affects the performance of such systems. So, let us get started. So, uh, the first thing I would like to uh, define here is really uh, about the work system. Uh, a work system is a physical entity and uh, it is a system which comprises of pr principally in principle humans, information and equipments. Okay. And uh, the basic purpose of such a physical entity which has all these three components that is humans, information and equipment is to uh, be able to perform some useful tasks or work which in general improves the productivity, which in general improves the uh, profitability and brings as such um, a lot of changes in towards the good direction associated with uh, the social framework you know of human civilization. So, that is how work systems are defined and uh, basically a work system contributes to uh, the production of product or service and all these uh, terms like product or services consider the addition of value, uh, a value uh, that otherwise may not be available in the raw state of some of the materials which would participate to make a product or some of the uh, soft skills that would participate to make a service. But through this organized study of work system, we should be able to pinpoint to uh, a certain correlation between the various stakeholders including humans, information and equipment in a manner so that you can produce this product or this service at a certain uh, controllable manner or in a certain uh, efficient manner uh, so that it can be useful okay, to the society in general. So, let us consider for example, an automobile production unit <coughs> which is actually a work system. It is probably one of the most uh, backwardly integrated work system. So, if I looked at the various levels across which an automotive gets produced. So, typically such a unit would comprise if I break it down into the different uh, aspects of the automotive. It starts from uh, a shop which gets the sheet metal and tries to press form the sheet metal into various shapes. We, we call otherwise this shop as the press shop. Uh, obviously, if I look at the next stage of this from the press shop there is a material flow of whatever has been pressed uh, or whatever has been formed into different shapes to go to the next level which is the weld assembly uh, which is actually the point where uh, the secondary manufacturing of joining together the different parts or components which have come from a subsystem level from the press shop is made together. From a weld assembly further the automotive goes into a paint shop which basically looks at the exterior as well as the interior of such uh, assembled weld components, which now are taking slowly the shape of a vehicle. And finally, the <coughs> automotive again flows into something called an assembly shop, where again uh, there are components or uh, functional units which are integrated or assembled to the overall vehicle including uh, the chassis of the vehicle or interiors of the vehicle or let us say uh, associated with um, all the different uh, opening closing members related to the vehicle so on so forth and such operation is known as assembly shop. And finally, it goes through an inspection process and goes again from this inspection to a dealer or a vendor who would be eventually responsible for developing an interface with the customer, okay, which will take information 
uh, or, or which will basically take uh, or buy uh, whatever is being produced from this automotive unit. So, this complete uh, automobile production unit with these various categories that I have shown you here is typically a work system. Okay. So, you can actually make a focus study and consider each of them as independent work subsystems, but if I wanted to look at in totality how automobile production unit would function, there are different uh, operations associated at different stages of the basic sheet metal which comes into operation and gets shaped into what you call the automotive and various functional non-functional members associated with it and this whole process as such between the press shop, the weld shop, the assembly, uh, the, uh, the paint shop, you know the vehicle assembly uh, inspection and dealer is followed. Now, if I looked at the involvement of these three important components namely humans, equipment and information, they are all available at plenty in some of these different shops. For example, there is uh, a relationship between how the material flows in into the paint shop from uh, you know a sheet metal manufacturer which would involve again uh, people who are associated probably not directly, but indirectly to maintain or augment the production system. Okay, so, some people and some information uh, let us call it people and information associated with the production associated with the production of the press components or the press sheets okay, uh, uh, of a press shop. There are many equipments here including mechanical presses. hydraulic and pneumatic systems, inspection equipment etcetera which is being operated in unison in order to do different operations to the sheet. In fact, uh, a series of such mechanical pressers put in line are known as a transfer line and they are more appropriately known as transfer pressers where there are different dies which would do the press forming operation on the sheet metal as it comes and between the different stations you have even a uh, auto carry uh, carrying mechanism between one station to the other. So, that you can make the transfer line completely independent of human intervention, but there are going to be people associated at every level including let us say people who are associated with inspection of the dies people who are associated with uh, monitoring of you know how much lifetime would typically uh, be there on a single die, uh, people who would load unload, people who are associated with adjusting the gaps between the various uh, components of a transfer line so on so forth. So, although part of it is mechanized, but there are people who are associated with such processes and of course, everything which involves people and mechanized system has information flow. because. The people who are running the transfer line as such would need to provide information from time to time about the different parametrics, about the different variants which are being made on a press shop and there is again the involvement of uh, uh, people, uh, information. So, you have information, you have uh, humans and you have equipments which are working in unison together to perform a useful work which is giving the pressed sheets or the panels which would be assembled together in a weld line. Similarly, if I wanted to look at weld assembly, there would be involvement again of people of information uh, flow and also a substantially uh, unique amount of unique type of equipments and many number of equipments at different stations which would lead to uh, you know accomplish the welding. Mostly the welding carried out in car assemblies are spot welds and uh, there are going to be areas related to the front underbody of the car, uh, the side panels of the car, uh, the areas related to let us say the roof of the car or even the back door of the car uh, or, or uh, the rear underbody of the car. So, all these things need to be quote unquote assembled together in terms of spot welds, so that the overall structure or framework comes up and so there is going to be involvement again from people, information and equipments at this particular stage. A similar thing goes into the paint shop, where again there are uh, associated tasks with respect to the electro deposition coat, uh, coatings related to spray coatings which are going to happen on the interior and exterior of such cars, where again people and again uh, as far as possible mechanization and information flow is used for accomplishing something called the 
painted body structure. Uh, the most amount of involvement of people and workflow in such automotive production units would typically happen at the assembly stage, where there are going to be uh, many operations which simply cannot be automated and there has to be involvement of people. And so, whenever there is an involvement of people, automatically there has to be uh, the involvement of information given to those people or information collected from those people and information which passes uh, as such from the previous station to the uh, successive station or vice versa. So, that there is a smooth operation and flow in the system which, which happens and so therefore, obviously this whole system can be considered to be a very complex work system. Now, there are many things associated with such systems and uh, one of the main aspects whenever there is involvement from people or involvement of processes or involvement of let us say information flow happens and that with respect to automated highly automated equipments happen. They are going to be uh, the need for a very organized study of all these individual participants uh, and the whole idea behind such organized study is to ensure that the system works uninterruptedly and also at its lowest uh, cost as well as its most optimized output. And so, therefore, there has to be a quantitation of all these aspects and an organization of the knowledge base in all these aspects for defining the work system in a proper manner. And this uh, topic as such what I would be uh, sort of going through today is in a way to summarize some of those tools which are needed to understand the work system in terms of its organization, in terms of its uh, you know uh, let us say operating at some optimal uh, best conditions and in terms of how to maintain those optimally best conditions with time. So, let us look into a little more uh, detail of some other work systems. Work systems can be associated with services. For example, if I looked at a parcel boy who is going to uh, deliver you know uh, customers uh, some parcels or some packages, he provides a service, but again <coughs> there is also involvement of people who would secondary people who would carry the parcel, the primary person who is responsible for delivering of the uh, parcel, the person who is going to dock all those parcels, one who is going to route all of them. There is going to be also carriers involved between the place where the parcel is being sent to the place where it is being sent. Uh, those carriers are also in a way people who are identified to make the system work or happen and there is also going to be information flow from the point the parcel is being dispatched to the parcel uh, delivery point. So, that all these again come as a function in the work system. So, uh, whether it is a service or a product or in fact anything associated with uh, uh, value addition to the society, we can consider a model uh, of a system which is delivering that to be a work system. Some other examples could be for example, worker operating a machine tool in a factory or a robotic welding line in an automobile plant or even a designer working at a CAD workstation, which can consider uh, to be in the purview of work systems. So, having said that uh, obviously, uh, in the last two slides what I did mention is captured here on this one small you know uh, schematic, which talks about that any work system would have a process and this process typically would add value to some of the inputs, which could be related to uh, let us say raw materials or even information or services. And uh, this would actually uh, involve people, involve information and involve equipments to produce something, which is useful for the society, which could be in terms of service or a product or any other work that is being delivered by such a system. And so, therefore, this is in a way summarizing what I said in the last two slides about what could really be work system as a physical entity. Now, when we talk about some modalities associated behind such work systems, there are obviously uh, the involvement of <coughs> methods. Okay. So, can we really identify what are the tasks or what are the jobs which are involved in the uh, let us say associated humans, which are involved in the work system. Okay. So, an analysis and design of the same, which falls under the purview of work methods. Uh, for example, uh, let us say for example, there is an assembly line, an automotive assembly line and there is a person who is responsible for mounting the two wheels on one side of the car to the disc brake on the front side and the drum brake on the rear side. So, his 
task and job may be related to uh, a lot more than what you see as just assembly of the tire or the wheel to the automotive. It may be related to even may be doing some sub assembly related to the wheel which is offline carrying the wheel all the way to the automotive on the line uh, putting the wheel in place on bolts which are coming out of let us say the disc or the drum and then trying to individually tighten some of the screws uh, some, of, some of the nuts I am sorry hexagonal nuts to all those bolts and then either uh, tighten it through an automatic machine which would turn all these bolts together or uh, nuts together or individually use guns or pneumatic guns to sort of tighten all the four nuts and then after that also torque them at a certain value to establish that they are safely tightened and torqued. So, this whole process that a person is following is basically broken down into small tasks and subtasks and the idea is that if we can uh, sort of you know compartmentalize into smaller tasks the control of such tasks and elimination of the waste associated with such tasks would be much easier uh, to happen. So, therefore, the first thing which comes is can we define the work methods. Okay? So, this becomes a part of the process that we are talking about. We also talk about work measurement which is basically again the analysis of a task to determine the time that should be allowed to perform the task. So, obviously, if there is a task and if there is a distribution of tasks sub, uh, sub, some tasks to formulate a major operation or a major let us say uh, working method, uh, each such task would actually be at the behest of some time spent. Now, this may vary between worker to worker, it may vary between process to process, but then uh, there has to be a time scale assigned to such tasks. So, that uh, when we talk about quantitation of are the tasks being done in a proper manner, are the uh, jobs being accomplished in its optimal best condition, there is always a quantitation or a value available in terms of time that those tasks would take. Okay. So, therefore, if supposing now people start working on changing the task pattern or changing some of the modalities associated with the tasks, it will immediately start affecting the time which would immediately start affecting the productivity, the overall productivity behavior of the work system. So, that is again one important aspect associated with uh, the work system which is work measurement. So, you have all the work methods laying out all the tasks and jobs, work measurement which is about assigning times to such individual tasks or jobs. So, that the overall time frame can be established behind a certain work to be carried out. And then of course, there is a level at which uh, some basic administrative decision making, some management, uh, some organizational aspects come into picture, uh, which would actually lead to the continual maintenance of the task plan and the implementation of the task plan in a proper manner over let us say uh, several years. Okay. So, uh, people in such practices who are at the work management level would typically look at whether what we are doing is useful or is adding value or what we are doing is probably not useful, not adding value and then eliminate the waste from the useful and try to improve productivity, try to improve uh, let us say the effectivity in supervising and training of some of the human factors which are associated with direct production of these systems. And so, these three things are very important the total number of tasks, the total measurement of such tasks and the total administrative control on the measurement and trying to define what should be and what should not be for operating uh, any work system. And these are some of the important modalities behind such work systems. So, obviously, uh, if we looked at all the jobs and occupations, uh, so there are many kind of uh, people who are involved particularly in the human aspect of the work system uh, and we can typically categorize such people into four broad domains or four categories. One are the people who are associated directly with the product, the person who is making the product, who is basically a production worker. A person who is associated with ensuring that the product happens in the way it happens by moving in a timely manner, supplying material in a timely manner, supplying the necessary people in a timely manner and so therefore, there are certain logistic workers. This could be supervisors or materials professionals or people related to uh, maintenance who would ensure that there is a smooth flow between the different uh, work centers of the, the, the tasks which are being intended 
uh, to add value on the product chain. And then there are people who are uh, associated with providing some kind of a service. For example, let us say some people are associated with providing domain knowledge or information about the product. Okay. Two people who are new into the system and who are untrained. Some people are associated with providing uh, you know service related to ensuring the basic comfort and safety of the people who are directly associated with the product uh, or production workers or even the logistic workers. So, these people are also very important components as far as the human uh, aspect of a work system go and they can be called as service providers. And then there are people who are knowledge workers who would create new knowledge based on some observations that they have routinely about a system and try to solve some problems. For example, people in quality of an automotive uh, workshop or an automotive uh, assembly. So, the basic uh, role of a vehicle quality manager or vehicle quality in charge is to sort of monitor at every level whether compliance is being uh, made to whatever has been laid out in terms of processes and functions, whether the overall assembly of the automotive which finally gets generated is uh, performing to an extent that it is supposed to perform and if there is a non-compliance try to find out what is the reason behind such non-compliance. And so, they are basically creating new domain knowledge to solve existing problems or even creating uh, or exploring an organized structure to the knowledge, so that such problems if they come routinely can get solved and so they are knowledge workers. So, therefore, these are the four broad categories into which you could really dif uh, you could sort of differentiate all the jobs and all the occupations which are involved using uh, any such work system. And uh, let us now do a little bit historical perspective to look at why there is really uh, a, a need for um, governing all this in such an organized manner. And one of the needs that you must realize is that our population is increasing and there is a lot of demand as such which is coming because of this increase alone. So, if I looked at some demographics here in 1950 for example, the world population was only about 2.45 billion which has now come to the order of about 6.5 billion. So, it is actually almost more than doubled, it is more than a 200 percent increase. And then if you look at simply the developing nations there is of course, a 90 percent increase in population in such nations, which makes life even more tougher and which needs to uh, sort of uh, you know be balanced by putting over stress to some of these work systems, which are continuously adding value uh, to maintain augment you know rising standard of livings and in fact, life in general trying to make life simpler uh, by giving uh, services or products. You know, and so therefore, uh, the need for efficiently doing something which you are doing for the last about 10 years more and more becomes more prominent because such social value additions are really dependent on what is the demand level and the demand level is on an ever increasing track. Okay, so therefore, there is definitely a need to study work systems in terms of the productivity that would have they would have in terms of how much they are adding as, as value and what is the kind of involvement or what is the kind of expenditure that is involved in uh, adding that value to, uh, to uh, society in general. And so, therefore, uh, if I looked at let us say these people who are uh, currently a part of our uh, let us say overall population, about 1 billion of them are just below the poverty line struggling for the basic needs, uh, which are related to food, clothing, shelter, security, health, essentials like water, sanitation, so on and so forth. And so, therefore, uh, these are the people who do not even have the basic uh, necessities uh, that would be needed uh, for a good sustenance. Okay? And so, therefore, it all gives a burdening influence uh, to the burgeoning need of productivity management within those existing work systems, which are going to cater and increase the standard of living for such another people who are a part of this whole uh, population. So, in fact, uh, for improving the standard of living of its citizens, uh, the concerned nation must raise its productivity, there is no other way and uh, that is again linked to the economic growth, which actually brings in the comfort of the standard uh, of life or living in general. And for any organization, uh, if I looked at 
the organization from a work systems point of view, there is a process, there is an input and output. And what is more important here is how much output at the behest of what input. Okay, and what is kind of input? Input could be just you know in terms of um, maintaining a process, augmenting a process. Uh, it could also be in terms of the material that you are supplying to a process or maybe some human needs which are supplied to a process, anything which is a stakeholder in this whole work system. Okay, and this all would couple up together to formulate at the behest of all such things associated with this process or this work system, what is this level and can this level be changed or increased with respect to lowering of some of the inputs to such process or such work systems. So, this is again what we mean really by productivity and this is something which is very, very important for sustained growth and contribution to the economy as such. So, inputs uh, again can be of various forms, I think I have already mentioned these, but just uh, to give you uh, from a different perspective of M's. So, there are uh, man, material, machine, method, management, market, information or messages and moment that is time. These are the different M's which could be thought of uh, sort of you know inter participating within a process to give the process to its final destination which is the output which could be either a product or a service and the productivity in this case then would be defined simply as the output by the input. Okay. So, the idea here is that can I take this up by changing the input to go down so that overall there is a higher productivity increase of such systems which would then start adding more and more value at lesser and lesser expense. So, overall the standard of living can come up or the, uh, the life uh, can be better. So, it may be sort of noted that production which is the number of products is different than productivity. Production can be any numbers of uh, outputs which are coming out of a process, but at what cost it is coming out is not being considered while we consider production alone. What is important to us is the ratio between what is your investment or what is your input to that output or production level which is coming out and there is where the definition productivity lies. So, it is quite different from what we otherwise know standard way as production. So, the level of output of a given process uh, relative to the level of input would definitely uh, be the productivity and uh, the process can generally refer to either individual production or service operations and I am kind of trying to summarize what I said so far. And productivity is an important metric in the work system because improving productivity is the means by which worker compensation can be increased without increasing cost of products and services that they can produce. So, it is another way of uh, making it less expensive and affordable to all. So, you could say uh, in a way that you know uh, just by using knowledge management or just by using uh, proper uh, the right things at the right place at the right time, let us put it this way, you get to a level which is the optimum best for producing uh, the numbers associated with the product or maybe services at probably the same level of cost or even a lower level of cost. And when it comes to this, there is no end to what you can do in terms of innovations, in terms of technology, in terms of systems okay, improvement. Uh, so, that this productivity can keep on rising and therefore, the job of a uh, person who wants to apply ergonomics into uh, daily life is to sort of study a work system from that standpoint and try to do as much as innovation or kaizen as you say uh, to the work system which is actually small innovations or small improvements. So, that there is a sustained increase, sustained continuous increase uh, in the overall productivity level associated with the work system.